Good evening, fellow musicologists, and welcome to this evening's lecture series on the musical works of Franz Josef Haydn. Can you all see me? Can you all hear me? Excellent. And let me take this opportunity to introduce you to tonight's speaker. Me, Gregory Scott Esquire Johnson. The first, winner of no awards, recipient of zero doctoral degrees. I've published nothing regarding Haydn, and this is my first musicology lecture series. In fact, I have absolutely no national or regional musicological recognition of any kind. But what I do have, my dear friends, is a winning personality, a passionate musical affair with Haydn's works, and of course, my charming English accent. So I invite you to open your mind to the wondrous world of musical wit, humor, elegance, and most importantly, to one of the most underrated, underappreciated, yet influential composers of the classical world. Now, Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, they're all brilliant in their own right, of course, but there's just something about Haydn that stretches my mind, inspires my imagination, tickles my musical funny bone, and leaves me wanting more. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the musical brilliance of Haydn. Haydn's tale is indeed a thrilling one, filled with drama, humor, and even a bit of musical cheek. But before discussing Haydn's musical style, we must first explore the musical roots of his childhood, as well as the social context in which history recounts his story. Haydn began his musical journey singing in the Vienna Boys Choir at the St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna. He was a choir boy, of course, he was destined for greatness. Despite his noble roots of singing, however, there is a sad reality in regards to Haydn's historical reception. You see, unlike his contemporaries, Mozart and Beethoven, the music of Haydn is, uh, well, hidden from many who do not study classical music, that is. Why is this, you may ask? Well, personally, I am under the belief that the snobbish musical historians in the 18th century couldn't handle... Oh, wait, that's a Baroque joke. Uh, they were less smitten with Haydn than Mozart. After all, Mozart was the child genius prodigy who wrote with elegant precision and perfection. Symmetrical phrase structure, elegant and singable melodies, diatonic functional harmonies, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Even the 19th century romanticists loved Mozart. He was the composer who didn't write for the stuffy court. He was a freelance musician who suffered for his art and died a tragic death before his time while writing a death mass. Oh, what a great story. Beethoven's freelance music, of course, was used to bring democracy throughout Europe during the French Revolution. 19th century musicologists revered the dramatic flair and political upheaval his music symbolized. Haydn's brilliance got lost in all of that drama when the 19th century musicologists were writing the first biographies of 18th century composers. I am here to tell you, however, that despite Haydn's lifelong devotion to the Esterhazy court, those stuck-up snobbish aristocrats, his music was far from ordinary, especially by 18th century standards. And believe you me, Haydn had dramatic flair. 
His student drawing period is evidence of that, thank you very much. I mean, just listen to these accents. And F sharp minor. F sharp minor in the 18th century? I mean, come on, people. Oh, that dramatic flair. And the syncopated rhythmic drive, purging your very soul of all 18th century aristocratic elegance and vapidness. Listen to that building chromaticism! Yes, indeed, Haydn's Symphony No. 45, nicknamed the Farewell Symphony, is an excellent example of his Sturm und Drang era. And humor, oh, Haydn's humor. I mean, seriously, can you imagine opening your string quartet like this? What? An authentic cadence as the first two chords of the first movement? Oh, the nerve of that man. Oh, it gets me every time. and the irregular phrase structure, when he was able to play with the audience's expectations, I mean, really? Ah, oh, genius, absolute humor and genius. Oh, bother, look at the time. I'm afraid that ends today's session. I didn't even get to his late symphonies. Fear not. I will continue this lecture series on Haydn every day this week from 1 o'clock to 2.10 p.m. in room F-115. So I invite you to join me for continued discussion on this scintillating sensation from the 18th. Ta-ta for now.